What up, Hocus Kids? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. Tell them what you just said to me before. Oh, you're not gonna leave that no, in? Tell no, no, no. It was the perfect take the first time. Um, I petitioned that that's the one that goes it's getting in. getting edited out, so you gotta, you nope, gotta repeat No, I will be silent on this one. You can tell it yourself. So, first and foremost, I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. Obviously, I'm here with my husband, who has decided that now is a good time to roast me. Now, Allegedly. when we're getting ready to shoot vids, Allegedly. now is the time to talk shit it's about alleged. me. It never happened. You've never seen it. It doesn't exist. I'm nothing but a nice man, even behind camera. Yeah, I, that's due to my editing. Hey, they on, don't see. Camera. They don't see I, how you are I, because I do that for you. Yeah, so back man. to the matter at hand. Yes. My husband has decided that he wants to talk shit about how I wear my pants. Right. Y'all don't ever see the lower half of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I tend to edit from the chest up. Right. Sometimes y'all get a little titty. Most of the time you don't, you know. So what exactly do they know about your torso? Uh, they know it exists, right? Okay. I would presume that they don't think I'm a disembodied pair of tits I in mean, the head. I mean, you'd be a hot top half, <laughs> you know? They don't see my lower half. I don't right. even ever, like sometimes you know how you stand up in vids? Mm -hmm. If I stand up in my video, I edit it out. I, the point is when I like to feel secure in mm -hmm. my pantaloons, okay? Mm -hmm. Mi pantalones make right. me feel safe. So I like to keep them right around like my navel by my belly button. Maybe a little over if they're high-waisted pants. I was getting ready to say, she just says every pair of pants is a high-waisted pants. Because I only... And pulls them up as high know. as they You see how she's trying to talk over me? I understand that when you were growing up, right, it was all the rage to have, you know, the little low-rise pants, okay? Little low-rise pants, then you wear the thong, and then the thong comes out over the low-rise pant. I grew up in a good Christian household, okay? I did not grow up like that. I resent that slander wholeheartedly. The woman I talked to didn't wear underwear. And that's the <laughs> kind of girl that you need in your life. I'm done. Today, <laughs> today <laughs> we have got all over the place. Today, we are here to watch a casual geographic video. The title of this one is Animals Getting Elevated and Outrageously Faded. This has nothing to do with animals. Nothing to do. Oh, oh God. But I am super excited to yeah. see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, yeah. let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> What is the bird doing? It's hanging on for dear life. With a hangover. So one night in 2011, a Swedish man called the authorities to remove a moose in his neighbor's yard. He added that he believed the moose was intoxicated. How did he know it was intoxicated? Eh, no, no reason really, <laughs> just, just an inkling. Apparently the moose got wasted off apples from a tree and got so tipsy that it tipped That's over and funny. became part of the tree. And it took fire and rescue services to divorce the sauce moose from its tree. The moose oh got up and proceeded God. to walk back into the forest. The next morning, after passing out and going <laughs> AFK in the same neighbor's garden. So mostly happy ending, nobody got hurt, the tree was left more or less intact, and these pictures were taken by the man's 10 year old son with the hopes that he could sell them and use the money to buy a PlayStation. CNN would end up buying the pictures. So now there's some 22 year old Swedish dude that has the best conversation starter no matter what room he's in. And this wasn't a one time thing. If you had a nickel for every drunk moose story in Sweden, you'd have enough to buy yourself a first class flight really? to experience a Buzz Bullwinkle in person. I am an idiot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I did not think there were moose in places that were not North America. Oh yeah, that's kind of yeah, that's a little special. <laughs> okay, so here's what I thought. Uh -huh. I thought it was moose in North America. Mm -hmm. Mooses. Meese. Right. Right. And then it was like reindeer mm. in Northern Europe. Right. That's what I thought. I mean, it's half a thought. I was gonna say, well, look, okay, you're looking at me. <laughs> I am. You're looking at me I, like I'm crazy. I'm looking. But we have animals in North mm -hmm. America that they don't have over there. Like what? And vice versa. Name one. Leopards. Okay. Oops, I think I meant jaguar. One of those. Okay. Close enough. Alligators. Okay. You would never find an alligator in Finland. That's a stretch, probably, isn't it? But well, anyways, they're not only are they there, they're terrorizing kids. Yeah, like I they're, was. They're, they're I was attacking very wrong. the people out there. There was that time a moose got plastered and decided to harass school children. And yeah. they were Drunken elk terrorizes school kids. That's, I'm telling you. An angry elk is terrorizing kids 
at a school in Gothenburg. The animal has been skulking. What a word to use <laughs> yeah, to describe a moose. Like it's on the edges of the school, like staring in menacingly. <laughs> Around the school for days, it is completely crazy, according to staff, and may also be very drunk. Yeah. This morning, the king of the forest lay dozing at the entrance to the school. When the elk finally got up and moved aside, pupils at the school were still afraid to pass and had to be led in by their teachers. <laughs> the children are terrified. <laughs> Yesterday, the elk was so aggressive that the headmaster felt compelled to call the police. That just reminds me of when we went to the Grand Canyon. And yeah. there was that. There, so there was an elk. And Huge. people, people were like crowding around this fucking elk. Yep. And me and Chavez were a very safe distance away because I don't fuck with wildlife like that. And do you remember, there was a long haired, hippie dressed man with a yep. very baggy clothing thinking he was brother nature. Yeah. And he was feeling himself to try to go pet it. And then the elk made it very clear. I do, do not want you to approach. Do not touch me. And my wife was like, I didn't know they could make noises like that. I'm like, yeah, it's normally too late once they start making sounds. And then it was so funny because Chavez was like, okay, like, let's go back to the car. And I was like, oh, no, we're not going that way. We're going back the way we came. And Chavez was like, that's like an extra 10 minutes. I was like, okay. And I, we're going back the way Wide we came. Birth. And there was even one case where some moose binge on the forbidden fruit and then... Uh, well, I can't tell wow. you exactly what's happening here. Just know it's a three-player game with zero controller. It's believed that when <laughs> apples fall from trees, they eventually ferment and all the sugars become alcohol. And when moose eat these fruits, well, at best a child gets a PlayStation and at worst a child witnesses three moose stationed in play. Some scientists <laughs> argue that alcoholics are a myth and that moose are just too massive to be put out of commission by some apples. My response? There is no sober explanation for this. Right. Look at this dude. <laughs> it's not a stretch to believe some animals will go out of their way to alter their consciousness and the methods get a lot more out of pocket than just eating expired apples. Uh -huh. Brown bears in a reserve in Russia apparently huffed jet fuel to get elevated. We're, we're just gonna gloss, oh, where did they get the jet fuel? Dog, do you know how much an environmental danger it is to have jet fuel in a forest. <laughs> it's not like it's going anywhere. Guys, if you do not burn jet fuel, it's there for a very long time. Holy oh crap. God, where did they get the jet fuel? Damn. Brown bears in a reserve in Russia apparently huffed jet fuel to get elevated. Photographer Igor Spilinok spent seven months in bear country, nice and name. he says the bears would find these used barrels, take a hit oh. of kerosene and gasoline, and proceed to airdrop their conscience to Mars. Also, think about jet fuel. If you put it in barrels, the fumes do last, again, not burnt off, so it lasts for a very long time. Wow. If not vented, yeah. And yeah, the big bears started feeding, to the point where the yep. kerosene carnivores would actively stalk helicopters, just on the off chance they get to lap up any fuel that spills onto the soil. What? If you're judging them, you must not know what humans are willing to introduce into their bodies just to let their minds ascend. Yeah, According to probably. a survey, about 46% of Americans call Christmas their favorite holiday. For any of the 46 watching this, I apologize in advance. Oh. Reindeer have been seen actively seeking out and eating the Amanita muscaria mushroom. Oh, Thanks hilarious. to their special digestion, they're able to eat something considered poisonous to most animals. The mushroom is also a well-known hallucinogen, and considering oh. reindeer will go out of their way even digging through snow to cop a taste, Chances are they know too. And while it is poisonous, it's technically poisonous the same way alcohol is. Which is right. why shamans in Siberia would down the mushroom in rituals in order to become one with nature. And all the animals in it. While getting absolutely obliterated in the process. It's Amen. even believed that since unwanted toxins are flushed out the body through urine, if you didn't want to run the risk of getting folded by fungus, you could drink the pee of an inebriated ice deer to join the same wavelength as them. It's Please do not admit to drinking pee in my comment section, God damn it. It's my comment you section. You keep it to yourself. You can admit it in his comment section, just don't do it in mine. It's said that the fungi gives the users feelings and visions of Why taking is he running flight. Like a this? red and white being that puts reindeers in the clouds. Mm -hmm. Santa might have been a mushroom this whole time, I'm or dead. a shaman, and the reindeer charioting his sleigh of Christmas magic are just a bunch of caribou cooked off shrooms. Now you see why Rudolph was a red-nosed outcast. While everyone else was trying toadstools, he was out here crushing crystals. Uh, but long story short, get R. Kelly by the right reindeer and you'll us. both believe you can fly. Uh, that, that's probably in bad taste. Yeah, a little bit. Like the reindeer pee. In 2009, Tasmanian huh. farmers were plagued by crop circles that seemed to appear in their fields overnight. Some people thought it was aliens shooting their shot with the earth. The answer is somehow even weirder. This is a Bennett's wallaby. And just know this wallaby wallet. 
Tasmania okay. is the world's largest source of the poppies used to make opium painkillers. Oh. And the travel-sized kangaroos break into the poppy pastures and eat enough to go on a literal field trip with no school bus. Hey. Turns out the circles were caused by faded wallabies grazing in circles and then crashing. And these junkie so marsupials funny. will go as far as scaling fences and eating the same white opium gum used to make morphine and the purple stuff Lil Wayne oh likes. All that to get more stoned than a witch in Salem. And after they eventually come back to Earth, the wallabies... You got to stop saying these things. Again, leave a comment in my wife's comment section. Uh, let us know what you think about that. Witch hate. We support witches in my community. More Thank you very much. Stoned. Bro, that's They cold. didn't even get stoned. They were burned or drowned. I mean, dude. I mean, I think still... maybe they tied stones to them when they were like putting Put them in the, the Yeah, the river. lake. Because remember, a witch would release the rocks and be able to swim. Right. And then yeah. if they weren't a witch, they just They drowned. Dead. Yep. <laughs> and they were like, oops. He, they, that's not the reference he was making, but it is the one that I'm thinking of now forever. Wallabies wake up and just go about their day. Because only someone with no job and no bills to pay can afford to live like this. Which is why True. bees don't be having any of that. You want to get high on hive time? <laughs> you better pack up your stuff and figure life out because you're finna be homeless, good buddy. In the Whoa. summer, the intense heat can cause the nectar and flowers to ferment. The end game of that is literal buzzed bees flying under the influence. <laughs> and the symptoms are exactly what you'd expect. A hammered honeybee will often bump into flowers Whoa. and trees and can even get so sloshed that they can't make it back home and can flatline if they get too cold at night. Oh, it no. doesn't get a whole lot better if they do find their way back. Like I said, bees have no tolerance for the tipsy, and any bee suspected of being on the juice is violently confronted and thrown out the hive. And since bees primarily communicate through a waggle dance, it doesn't take long for a blitz bee to expose itself. Oh, In some no. cases, guard bees will cripple the offender by chewing their legs off yeah, to make they sure they do. physically can't come crawling back. Yep. Yeah, they make sure to make an example yep. out of them. And the reason is because bringing fermented nectar into the hive can quite literally destroy the entire colony from the inside. Oh. It'd be kind of like passing out special brownies before the big company-wide meeting. So yeah, bees on booze lose a whole lot more than their sobriety. Damn. Bees ain't the only ones gambling with life by flying under the influence. In 2006 in Vienna, Austria, 40-something birds were found expired on the ground. But when they were examined by scientists, they didn't find the signs of avian flu like they were expecting. What they did find were rotten berries in their systems, and suddenly the pieces started coming together. Damn. It's believed that the berries fermented inside the birds and got them more faded than an NBA legend's hairline. Not for real though, something about greatness means negotiating the integrity of your life. The songbirds even had the liver scarring that you'd usually only expect from a hardcore drinker. The result was a bunch of intoxicated birds face planting in the windows. Damn. In lighter news, the same way people start slurring their words once they get to first base with a bottle, buried down birds will often sing like drunks. In an experiment, what? vocal zebra finches were given some alcohol, and after a couple of sips, their songs got more disjointed, more disorganized, and just overall sloppy. That's Worst hilarious. part is, they probably thought they were killing it too, which makes them the complete opposite of bats. And you'd think something that flies for a literal living wouldn't do it while mind fogged. I said fog. I said fog. But bats yeah. don't really have a choice, and the ones that eat pro I had to do that in my video earlier. I had That's to be right. like, YouTube, just so you know, I didn't swear. This is the word that I said. Oh, okay, <laughs> man. Must be nice to have much self-control. Look, I got PTSD. YouTube tried to say I said a slur. A slur! They, okay, they did do you. I, I've been on YouTube for a long time. I've never had the tag of slur <laughs> usage with a timestamp. Bro, <laughs> they, said, they said, bro, right there, they was pointing at you, bro, That's isn't that you? And you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> they said I said a slur. Oh, I was like, a slur. Okay, yeah. look, I cuss, right? Yeah, occasionally. And, and I occasionally cuss, and sometimes I use the word nigga, right? They said I said a slur, and I watched the whole video like 17 times because I was... I was like, I must have said something. I didn't say anything. You know, you had your PewDiePie moment. Finally, in the sun. <laughs> you finally did it. Welcome to the club. No, unlike PewDiePie, I'm not guilty. Oh, yeah? What did they say when you reviewed it? Oh, they said I was right. Oh, yeah, they they were like, it was a mistake. They're I was right. like, you, you're damn right it was How a mistake. How did you make that slip of the finger, bro? That's comedy. Primarily fruit and nectar can often fall for the same traps as birds and bees and get royally fogged over. Except bats might just have the tolerance of a Russian veteran. In another experiment, you know, it's funny how often science involves drugging or drunking wildlife. Yeah. But bats from Belize were liquored up until some of them had a blood alcohol content of 0.3. 
Keep in mind, Driving While at .08 is playing with the Law, Life, right. and Lucifer since that's who you finna see next. But the drunk bats were somehow able to perfectly maneuver through an obstacle course without FUIing into a face. Yeah. They were also able to perfectly use their echolocation while very much buzzed off nectar. Unlike the songbirds who literally couldn't hold their berries for their life. Yeah. And since bats from Central and South America were able to handle it better than old world bats, it's believed this tolerance came from them eating more fermented fruit. Right. So basically the reason bats are able Ew. to completely drink you under the table is because the ones that couldn't became part of the past. Bats wow. are some of the lightest mammals on the planet, yet are also one of the strongest heavyweights when it comes to elk. But they aren't number one. The animal with the highest tolerance is something you might not have even heard of before. The pen-tailed tree shrew weighs less than a pack yes, of Skittles, yet can somehow that. also outdrink an elephant. It's the real. Malaysian tree shrew regularly sips nectar from the Bertam plant, yep. a plant so high in alcohol content that it smells like Peter Griffin after a shift at the brewery. Yeah. A concentration of 3.8% makes it as potent as beer and gives this nectar one of the highest ACs of any food. Yet the shrew drinks it like water and seems immune to it. To the point where the tiny squirrel monkey in Malaysia will spend hours nursing nectar. Apparently that's like a human downing nine glasses of wine and they do it without four kids in a failed marriage. And science doesn't exactly know how tree shrews can do this without unlisting themselves from the census. And the shrews are so committed to the cause that the plants they drink from have literally evolved to make themselves more accessible to them. The Bertam has strong sturdy stems and potent smelling nectar that basically acts as a Batman signal to shrews. They really spent millions of years investing into the shrews drinking habits. Look at that tail. The shrews evolved to be able to help themselves without also getting slumped. The slow loris is also a common customer of the Rattan. In an loris. experiment, the bug-eyed booze monkey chose alcohol over literal water. All I know is that if chimps had the tolerance with the tree shrew, the world would be a slightly safer place. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm go ahead and put an ad right here, because this is the part of the video where a lot of y'all are gonna click off, and honestly, I don't blame you. Chimps oh share about 99% of their DNA with us, and feeding for the fermented stuff is very much included. Chimps in West Africa have been caught trying the same palm wine villagers drink. They'd wait for the sugary palm wine to ferment, and then use leaves as sponges to soak it up just so they can squeeze it into their mouths. Smart. And yeah, the chimps got turned. But sometimes they get a little too gone for everyone else's good. Because there have been multiple cases of chimps raiding illegal brewing setups in Uganda and making off with whatever beer they could. <laughs> and in some cases, the beer blasted chimps would proceed to hunt human children. That escalated, didn't it? I'm not going to go too far into the specifics for the sake of our mental health and guidelines. Just know that the same way chimps will stalk and jump smaller monkeys as prey is the exact same way they go after children. My not God. to mention a chimp heavy on liquid courage is more likely to run a fade than just run. In their defense, humans encroaching onto their natural habitat and adding even more competition is the biggest reason for chimp carnage. Yep. But in their offense, chimps are 1000% the angry belligerent drunks of the animal world. And they're not the only primates that make their drinking our problem. Vervet monkeys on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts managed to drink themselves into an addiction. To the point where the drunkies fuel it by stalking tours from the trees just so they can snatch any drinks left unattended. I'm the booze dead. bandits are so committed that they even managed to work out the best times and places to get away with their thievery. It got so ridiculous that researchers decided to study them and turns out we're really no better than them. Since the drinking behaviors of these monkeys are so human, you'd swear it was a joke. In this experiment, they found that some monkeys are social drinkers that only participate if other monkeys get involved. Oh then you have God. the regular drinkers, the ones who do it, well, regularly and socially, but they're still able to help lead the troop. Right. I am, I am having an incredible time with this video uh -huh. still, especially the drinking monkey part. It was actually really interesting to learn about socially. I just started getting a headache. So I just, my face, I feel like my face is, looks completely not enjoying of this moment. You look high. Okay. You look like, you look like these monkeys. Okay, no, I just got it. I just pooped out immediately okay. all at the same time. Can you manage for another six minutes? Yeah, I'll be fine, but I'm just not going to be talking. I just wanted to make sure the audience knew, like, I am actually enjoying this a ton. Okay. But, yeah. All right. So they're pretty much the functional alcoholics. And then there's the bingers, the ones that drink themselves into a coma or until they get so aggressive they pick a fight with someone. So yeah, I'd say they're the frat boys of the group. These are the ones that would drink themselves into an early life retirement if you give them the chance. And finally, you have the monkeys that don't or barely drink at all. Also, apparently, <laughs> this is just funny to me, apparently it's the younger vervet monkeys that are more likely to turn up than the adults, since the adults have to be alert and aware of social dynamics in the group. You just like in real life. It's the younger people. Yeah. You know, when we were 21, 22, we was out here doing the most. And now at 27, people are like, you want to go to the bar? And we're like, the arcade I bar? I want to go home. <laughs> the, the coffee bar? The espresso bar? <laughs> when you say bar, do you mean My bed? House? By <laughs> when you say bar, do you mean mm. we go to 7-Eleven, right. grab a couple Mike's Hard Lemonades, right. and then go home? And don't even finish the Mike's Hard Lemonade? Is that mm. what you're referring to? Watch half a UFC event and fall asleep during the main event? Is that what you're saying? No? Oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. Different, different uh, translation there. 
Your pee pod can replace monkey with human and everything I said still tracks. And it doesn't just stop at booze. Once in the prehistoric times of 2000, in an experiment, a bunch of squirt. You know what? We'll rule of thumb. If I ever say the phrase in an experiment, expect nothing but nonsense to follow. Okay. This time it involved getting a bunch of squirrel monkeys stoned and then giving them the option to self-medicate. Sorry, real quick. So I started rewatching Supernatural again. This looked like a demon monkey. It does have the demon look from Supernatural. Yeah. I saw it and I was like, demon! And I was like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a monkey. Which they did, as the monkeys that were introduced to Mary Jane would be more likely to push a lever to receive an injection of THC. Proving that monkeys like to get high. And I could have told you that without the experiment. Right. Especially when you see the things lemurs do to boost their conscious. Oh. Even though they're not technically monkeys, the primates of Madagascar might have the most creative way of getting lit. Millipedes are poisonous, and black lemurs specifically will grab the bugs, chew on them, and then rub the toxins all over their fur as if it's bug spray. And science says that's exactly what they use it for. But the what? poison also doubles as a mind-altering life choice yeah, that causes lemurs to drool and become the literal yeah. highest in the room. Meaning these. lemurs also self-medicate they just be smoking millipede packs. Now there's oh a chance God. that lemurs really are just only using this as bug repellent, but this is not the conduct of someone who would pass a pee test. As for the millipede, imagine millions of years of evolution just for your biggest flex and defense to be used as a struggle bong for a lemur in its stoned age. Yeah. I'm sure the pufferfish can relate. You knew this was coming the moment you read the title. Pufferfish oh, are one of the most actually. poisonous things alive, and dolphins will take turns chewing on the puffer and then giving it to the next one in the rotation. That's Quite literally up. a puff puff pass. <laughs> and just like with the millipede's toxin, the tetrodotoxin from the pufferfish seems to have an effect on the dolphins. The effect resulting in some doped up dolphins and a seriously traumatized puffer. And Does it make the dolphins less rapey? Probably more creative with it. <laughs> That's fucked. That's fucked. And now you see why she's single. You remember how uh, I said a tiny tree shrew could drink an elephant under the entire bar? That wasn't a throwaway. I said that for a reason. Okay. For a while, scientists called cap on the stories of inebriated elephants, and their biggest claim was that it would take an outrageous amount of elk to have an effect on an animal that huge. Right, because Turns out, the most plus-size animal walking the earth today is also a massive lightweight. The ADH7 gene is the one most responsible for helping break down ethanol, aka the drink that leads to good nights and bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Humans are able to handle their drink a little before French kissing the floor, thanks to enzymes that allow us to break down ethanol faster than most animals. For elephants, the ADH7 gene is basically out of order, meaning they're less really? able to hold their liquor. So if a couple elephants scarf down a bunch of fermented fruit, it's suddenly more likely that they get bodied. Oh, which sounds no. fun, yeah, it sounds real cute, until you realize that means they're drunk driving a 12,000 pound meat vehicle, oh, and the consequences no. can be bad for everyone's health. There's even a story out there where a herd of 50-something elephants near an Indian village drank liquor made from the Mahua tree, and proceeded to drunkenly level several houses and even delete a few I, people. Wow. Animals like chimps and elephants become a threat to society the moment they get under the bottle. Yeah. But one animal's habit makes it a legitimate danger to itself. Some dogs in Queensland have developed an obsession with cane toads. Cane toads produce bufotoxin as self-defense, no. but the poison is also hallucinogenic, and dogs will often lick the toads and go off one. It's so potent that a dog exposed to it once is more likely to go out of its way to seek out another toad to get zooted. And they probably got it from us. There was a brief but very real time where the cool kids your mom warned you about did toad behind they the did, yeah. To the point where Peter Griffin, of all people, had to tell him to tighten up. And yeah, that's pretty much playing chicken with the Grim Reaper. Since the poison is poison, toad licking can result in both less dogs and people. There was even one case where a Spanish adult film star got charged with manslaughter after huffing toad with his friends and one of them ascended and never returned. Yeah. 2020 for real had some of the wildest headlines. But dogs ain't the only pets that be on timing. But if you've ever seen a cat on catnip, you already knew that. Uh, catnip yeah. comes from the pedicateria. I don't know what it is, I just love saying that. And that contains a chemical called nepodilactone. And nepodilactone will bind with receptors in the cat's nose the same way pheromones do. It even lights up the part of the brain responsible for you know, the, the thing cats do with other cats to make more cats. This whole time right. we thought they were high. When really catnip just makes them dumb and horny. And even though I was half kidding, it actually makes a lot of sense since catnip doesn't work on cats that haven't reached sexual maturity. The chemicals really? also hit the cat's opioid system, which is a gateway to 15 minutes of feline euphoria. And it's not just house cats. Catnip apparently has wild cats like leopards, cougars, lynxes, and even some lions in a chokehold. So yeah. I don't know why I, I never thought I about never that. I never. That. They are also cats. Of They're course. just big. Yeah, of course. That's what you're gonna do if you're gonna get attacked in the savannah. We just bring catnip. Bring catnip. Just be the original stoner. I mean, just look at this jaguar. Lots of cats will eat grass and leaves as a way to clean their system. Jaguars doing it with the hallucinogenic Yaji vine allows them to do so while also high-fiving Joe Rogan. And for the non-believers out there, I defy you to look this jag in the eye and tell me it's sober. 
bro in a galaxy and it's not this one and it probably did start as something just a detox but then eventually became a way of life i mean that's literally how cats got hooked on catnip the nepotecoteria is a mosquito repellent so there's a good chance that cats getting hooked on the nip was just a consequence of wild cats trying to get off flies off their back so i guess you can say mosquitoes do matter because without them we wouldn't have videos like this but that's gonna do it for this video go ahead and make sure you drink water hug your mother don't do toad man it's not a game thank you all so much for watching and i'm gonna see y'all in the next one well, he's hitting with another banging uh, uh, cat shirt. Yeah, his shirt was dope. Yeah, and he's he's coming out the woodwork. He's got one new one every freaking video, man. How you feeling? You doing okay? What's up? No, What's... don't worry about me. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. You good? I pooped out at the at the all at the same time. I had so much energy at the start, and I was like, I have none left. But it, it was a great video, actually, fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm glad you had a good time. I had a fantastic. You were time. looking a little zooted. Just to be clear, my husband and I don't do drugs. I do not do any. You, you guys know that about me. We don't You're... partake of the puffing, Sorry, right? Charlie we don't do none of that. Me. Uh, so he's not high. When you see that part of the video, he's not. He's just in a lot of pain. Also the way I act, which is the funniest thing I think for a lot of people to realize that we act like this Sober. normally. Yeah. Our Call of Duty games are great. But Casual Geographic is one of my favorite channels and the facts that he comes with somehow still surprise me. So and, it's a pleasure to be here. And he's consistently good. Yeah. I think I think that's what it is. It's been what, two years since we started reacting yeah, to him? Man, yeah. Back when he was hood nature, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sorry to dead name. name. I was gonna say sorry to dead name you. Yeah. And now that he's doing these longer form videos, you really can see like how good he is. And now that you can see his whole body, you can tell that he's in better shape now than ever. And his vocabulary is growing at an astonishing rate. And the references he makes. Some in bad taste. I'm Let me just okay. tell you. <laughs> Look, I understand that I might be in the minority, you but are imagine. Minority, yeah. But imagine <laughs> Casual Geographic mm -hmm. stand up. It would go over most of the most of the audience would not be into it, they but couldn't. I would be there. If Casual Geographic has a thousand fans, I'm one of them. If Casual Geographic has one fan, it's me. And if Casual Geographic right. has no fans, I'm dead. Okay? Right. That's how it is. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video just as much as we did. Husband, thank you so much for joining. I know you are not feeling well, still dealing with back. some after effects. Got my back. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's skittin' lit. <laughs>